selamat sore Bapak dan Ibu sekalian. Selamat datang di Ata Amerika, Pusat Kebudayaan Amerika oleh Kedutaan Amerika Serikat di Jakarta. Nah mungkin di sini ada beberapa ya yang baru pertama kali datang ke Ata Amerika. Jadi sebelum kita mulai acara kita pada hari ini, saya mau menjelaskan sedikit tentang acara-acara yang akan kita adakan untuk beberapa hari ke depan. Nah di Ata Amerika itu ada banyak sekali acara-acara ya, sama seperti hari ini. Seperti contohnya, kita akan mengadakan presentation the 10th annual Indonesian Student Forum. Jadi bagi yang tertarik untuk datang ke event ini, kita akan mengadakan eventnya um, sesi pertamanya hari Jumat 10 Agustus dari jam 2 siang sampai jam 5 sore. Dan yang selanjutnya karena hari ini juga bernuansa musik, kita juga akan mengadakan performance um, Jazz Diplomacy American Jazz in Indonesia. Jadi kita akan mengadakan uh, event ini uh, dan kita juga akan ada sesi ngobrol-ngobrol ya dengan para pemain musiknya uh, bagaimana pengalaman mereka setelah bersekolah ke Amerika untuk uh, mengambil studi tentang jazz performance. Kita akan mengadakan eventnya hari Kamis 23 Agustus dari jam 7 malam sampai jam setengah 9 malam. Dan semua acara di Ata Amerika itu gratis. Jadi boleh langsung datang aja ke acara-acara kita um, dan ajak keluarga dan juga teman-temannya. Nah kita di Ata Amerika selain ada event kita juga ada satu jasa lagi yang kita sebut dengan Education USA. Jadi mungkin di sini ada yang tertarik mau melanjutkan studinya ke Amerika. Atau mungkin ada yang kenal teman atau kerabatnya yang ingin melanjutkan studinya ke Amerika, boleh langsung datang ke Ata Amerika dan ngobrol dengan dua advisor kita. Ada Caroline dan juga Vina. Dan mereka ada setiap hari di Ata Amerika dari jam 1 siang sampai jam 9 malam. Kecuali di hari Sabtu, uh, mereka ada dari eh, kita buka dari jam 10 pagi sampai jam 9 malam. Dan bagi yang belum tahu, Ata Amerika sudah buka dari tahun 2010. Jadi Desember ini kita akan merayakan ulang tahun kita yang ke-8. Dan semenjak itu kita sudah me, uh, mengadakan banyak sekali acara ya. Lebih dari 4.400 acara and counting. Jadi kita uh, akan mengadakan acara yang lebih seru lagi. Jadi bagi yang ingin mendapatkan update dari kita, itu gampang. Kita ada free membership. Jadi kayak membership gratis, di mana kita hanya membutuhkan email aktif Bapak dan Ibu sekalian. Jadi caranya gampang ya, tinggal ke website aja di www.atamerika.or.id nanti masukkan uh, nama lengkapnya dan juga emailnya dan kita akan update seminggu sekali aja. Kita nggak akan spamming setiap hari Kamis atau hari Jumat. Dan selain itu mungkin ada yang uh, suka main sosial media di sini, pasti semuanya suka dan punya sosial media ya. Nah di sini kita juga uh, banyak uh, punya sosial media dan juga sangat update. Jadi jangan lupa untuk follow dan juga subscribe Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Stellar dan juga Youtube channel kita. Dan mungkin untuk acara hari ini mungkin ada dari keluarganya yang nggak bisa hadir bisa langsung diinformasikan saja karena event hari ini akan kita live streaming di website kita. Sebenarnya semua acara kita sih selalu kita live streaming, jadi bisa nonton di rumah. Jadi gimana caranya? Bisa langsung di refer saja ke website www.atamerika.or.id, nanti klik video, nanti uh, bisa nonton di rumah ya. Oke? Okay? Sebelum kita mulai, ada sedikit opening remarks. Please welcome Bapak Jet T. Dornberg, Ad America Director from US Embassy Jakarta. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm sorry, I'm still learning Bahasa Indonesia, so I'm not I'm speaking English today. Um, I want to welcome you all to Ad America and welcome you here for this event. We're really excited to be here at this event for a number of reasons. One, because it's a great opportunity for us to work together with our partners, Yusindo and Aminef, um, two groups that we've worked with many times before that we really enjoy a close, warm relationship with. We are going to be celebrating. Uh, in the America, America and Indonesia have had a long relationship, now coming on to almost 70 years. Next year, we'll be celebrating 70 years of the official relationship between Indonesia and the United States. And we're really excited about that because it represents the kind of friendship, the kind of development, the kind of partnership that we think is, is sort of part of the heart of the relationship between Indonesia and the United States. And today's event for us speaks to that relationship, speaks to 
the sharing of culture that exists between Indonesia and America, that Indonesia has a home and a heart in the United States. Americans increasingly are learning about Indonesia, learning about the kind of music forms, the art forms that come out of Indonesia. And it's partly our job to try to encourage them to learn more about it, to introduce them more to it, to bring Americans here to experience Indonesia so that they can share Indonesia when they go home. Um, so it's great, though, for us also to let you all know about some of the work we're doing and about Americans accepting and learning about Indonesia uh, in the United States. And so this is a lovely opportunity to do that. So I hope you enjoy today's show. I hope that this leads to more experiences, more collaboration, more partnerships between Indonesians and Americans so that we can build a stronger, warmer relationship. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much for the warm welcome, Bapak Jet. Let's just start the event. Please welcome our moderator for today, Muhammad Ahir, SCTV News anchor and producer, and Angklung Muhibah Board of Producer. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Selamat sore, Wilujeng Sonten. Allow me to use several languages because I have uh, some of friends from Bandung. Hello, Wita. <laughs> Yeah, um, as mentioned before, I'm currently working as an exclusive producer and also news anchor at a four bulletin night news called Liputan 6 SCTV. That is my uh, daily job, five days in a week. But I would like to call myself rather to a full timer of road trip Angklung campaigner or promoter. Yeah, because uh, it's so fun and full of pride also. Uh, we all believe all agree that uh, we are, when we are doing a road trip, it's also always fun, even though a lot of trouble inside of it. And also pride because uh, we bring our national flag when we do, when we do um, our cultural mission to promote our country in the international forum. So I would like to ask you all to see the, some, uh, one of the video that can uh, describe my activity. Ini adalah cerita tentang perjalanan. Perjalanan ke enam negara di Eropa. Dengan penuh semangat untuk perjalanan yang tak terlupakan. Dengan membawa bambu kemana-mana. Bambu yang menjadi perjuangan para pahlawan kemerdekaan, saat ini menjadi senjata utama kami dalam bentuk angklung. Berlin di Skotlandia, Westerlo di Belgia, Paris di Prancis, Hamburg di Jerman, Sevenikoslek di Republik Ceko, dan Zakopane di Polandia. Di mana tim-tim dari berbagai negara di dunia menampilkan karya terbaiknya. Setiap hari dia saya tahu angklung, eh begitu itu ada di negara orang, katanya itu satu, satu salah satu hal yang patut kita banggakan. Di perjalanan ini kami pun melakukan kolaborasi dengan pemuda pemudi dari berbagai penjuru dunia. Untuk membangun pertemanan dan jaringan internasional. Kami disatukan melalui musik dan kebudayaan.
perjalanan Muhibah Ampun ini sangat berarti. Lalu mengenalkan kepada dunia tentang Indonesia. Perjalanan ini memiliki tempat yang spesial di hati kami untuk selamanya. Sampai Oke, okay. there was just a short video about uh, my activity, but I believe it has um, same key message with uh, our special event today. Uh, we are going to talk about traditional music in new spaces, promoting Indonesia and music in the United States. And it's brought to you by USINDO, United States Indonesia Society, US Embassy, and also Fulbright Aminev. So give a big applause for the three of uh, yeah, institution that uh, support our discussion for this afternoon. And I believe our next two fabulous speakers have big patience in running their cultural activities. So I would like, we would like to know more about it and I would like to invite Ibu Tricia Sumarianto. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> A key Angklung promoter in the United States and also the conductor of House of Angklung, Hannah Stanford. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Our last but not least, please welcome also come up to the stage, Hannah Stanford, Fulbright Scholar, Scholarship Recipient, and US based Orkest Keroncong. Keroncong Rumput Singer. Hello, Hannah, apa kabar? This is your mic. <laughs> Ya, karena penyanyi keroncong pasti bisa berbahasa Indonesia ya. So, <laughs> yeah, we would like to uh, ask and discuss about your fabulous activities here. So, please have a seat first. Terima kasih. <laughs> okay, um, we are, we'll not not talk about my video because you have uh, also uh, awesome activities also. For the first question for Tricia before you uh, give some pr uh, presentation to the audience. Um, maybe you can tell us how long have you been doing this? Okay, that's a that's a very uh, interesting question because I always I don't know how to put it in in English, but most if you know kecebur, so kecebur. that that's me. <laughs> uh, my my last time when I played Anklung before I, I was asked to join uh, the group of House of Anklung was when I was in elementary school. I didn't, I didn't even remember that I played Angklung. I have to think, I know the instruments, but whether I have played the instruments. And I remember I was in uh, elementary, I think the third or the fourth grade, we played for maybe a couple of times. So that's it. But I, my myself, I played uh, piano and I like to sing. I joined choir. Okay. So it has a similar concept, I think. Similar concept between Angklung and sort of piano. Angklung and uh, piano choir, yeah. In choir. So, um, Both of you, how did you meet? How did you meet? How did we meet? That's interesting. Hannah, I believe it's up <laughs> yeah, to you. Yeah, I love this story. Um, so I had just gotten back from a Dharma Siswa scholarship. It was my first year in Indonesia. Um, and I guess Bu Trisha reached out to me directly. I don't know how she knew who I was. Um, but she had heard that I had been working on Krantong, and she invited me to collaborate with the House of Anklung. Um, so I think that event was at George Mason. Oh, uh, it was at Montgomery College Cultural Art Center, Silver Spring, Maryland. Of course, <laughs> the George Mason is different one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> of course, so we did a collaboration with uh, with Kronchong and and Anklung. Yeah, and we kind of kept in touch ever ever since. Like this was totally an accident. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we just both happened to be in Indonesia at the same time. And in what year you did the, the first collaboration? 2015. 2015. 2015. Okay, it's about uh, two or three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's not just about meet each other, but also um, meet the chem chemistry each other. Ha, how did you find it? <laughs> until, yeah, you, you, you do the collaboration until right now, and you are being the conductor of uh, the album. Yeah, actually, we met in 2015. I know uh, Hannah was a singer of the Orkest Kroncong Rumput. So, Orkest Kroncong Rumput is based in Richmond, Virginia, which is very close to Washington, D.C., where we live. And I heard a lot from, I think, the embassy. There were some events at uh, Washington. And then I know 
Hannah has a big group of the Orkas Kroncok Rebut. How many of you were there? Uh, we're up to 12. Up to 12. All bule. All, All bule. bule. Yeah. All, All bule Americans. playing Kroncok and Chuk and Chak. Right. That's the first time I learned that there are two different types of uh, kind of ukulele or Chuk and Chak. And then I learned that from Hannah. <laughs> uh, we were, t we were having our first concert in 2015 called Pulau and I s and our Chairman of House of Anglung, which is Pak Erwin, is here. He's our alumni. Hello, Hello Mas Erwin. Hi. Now he lives in Jakarta. Uh, and then that was our first concert. And we are thinking to have a collaboration with local uh, artists, uh, performers, and especially Americans. So we saw Orkas Kroncok Group, but I think that, that would be very interesting to have Hannah in our concert. Unfortunately, the group was not available, so we only had Hannah. We, can, a we can ask Hannah for <laughs> Sing a little bit of Keroncong song, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Nanti ada video. Nanti ada video, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay, Hannah, so how did you find uh, your cu cultural patient in music Keroncong? I mean, it's a real kind of, uh, we, uh, we can say it's a yeah, real thing in Indonesian people, but you love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, the first time I saw Keroncong was through a YouTube video. YouTube? YouTube. And honestly, you know, it was just kind of, or it was just chari chari. Like, I was just kind of digging around on YouTube. Um, and, and honestly, that particular video wasn't like, it wasn't high quality. It was just kind of like something someone took on their phone. It was kind of hard to hear, but I had this little gut feeling about it and I was really curious about it. Um, and so, and this is, this is kind of what I, yeah, at the time I, I asked like some friends who knew about Indonesian music. Have you heard of this music, Karan Kong? Karan Kong. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, first of all, it's Karan Chong. Uh, secondly, yeah, that's for old people. That's for orang tua. And I was like, okay. Um, so I'll talk more about it later, but when I first got to solo and I had this in my head that this is music for old people, and then I saw all of these Anak Muda, all of these young people playing Karanchong in solo, I was like, what's going on here? So we'll get more into that later. Yeah. So uh, from which part of Karanchong that you really fall in? From the scene, uh, from the song, from the song, or, or from the ukulele, or which part do you really most love most? Mm. Um, it's really the, I think it's really the ensemble quality. Yeah, and I think that's that's present in a lot of Indonesian music. So Angklung being a perfect example and Gamelan being another example, okay. but it's not, it doesn't really work by yourself, right? It's not that interesting for me to play chuk by myself. With just one Angklung, probably more fun in a group, right? I think that's what I like about it is the ensemble and the, and the community that you build around it. Okay, now I think we would like to hear more about a story from both of you. You uh, you have about 15 to 20 minutes, each of you, of time to yeah share more uh, interesting story about your cultural activities. Okay. Tricia, you go first. Thank you. Can I have that? Oh, yes. <laughs> this magical button. <laughs> okay, I'll be sitting for now, but I might standing up. So, uh, so I would like to share my experience in promoting Indonesia in United States through Anklung. So this is a picture of our group, the House of Anklung. Uh, many of them are here. Hello. Uh, are the alumni? Please raise your hand. Please stand up, please. There, there, there. <laughs> Give applause for the okay. team. Thank you. We have uh, Mas Erwin, Tehiani, Echi, Bueli. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, many members, Indonesian, mostly are Indonesian, and some of them are diplomats. So they, when they stayed in the United States, they happened to join us to, to help us and to promote Indonesia through Anklung. Uh, a little bit about my journey. I joined the House of Anklung in 2009 uh, with a very little experience of Anklung, like I mentioned before. And while the first interesting part is the challenge because most of the members of the groups are were not musicians. They don't know music at all. And some of them, they, they would tell me that I'm tone deaf. So that's, that's a challenge. But I think, I know there are some uh, Anklung experts here. That's, that's always been our uh, challenge as an Anklung teacher. And, and but from with that basic uh, uh, members that we have, what I can see is their commitment and their uh, dedication. They really want to play music, although they didn't know how to play music. Uh, they want to share their experience with the others and to promote Indonesia through different uh, cul uh, cultural events. But since then, there are two big momentums that, I, that made me want to do this more. First is the 
when Angklung is listed in UNESCO as Intangible World Heritage in 2010. And after that, it's followed by the first Guinness World of Record in DC when there were more than 5,000 people uh, played at the Washington Monument. So this is what happened in, in DC. That is Mr. Daeng Ujo, who were invited to lead the uh, performance. And House of Anklung and our group were the group that uh, play a major role behind the scene before the Daeng Ujo act, uh, arrived in Washington, D.C. And by doing this, we, we went to different society. We went, we went to different community, to different uh, uh, and international events and trying to share how this angklung, this unique instrument, and I saw the a big potential of uh, how angklung can really touch the American hearts. How can they touch the American uh, life through the instruments? Mr. Pak Daeng showed us the, the method by using, naming the each angklung with islands, which uh, if you happen to go, anybody has been to Saung Ujo Bandung? Sure, many of you. So you see how they put an island on the on the sticker on the angklung, and that is very I think it's very effective to teach the uh, the audience about Indonesia through the instrument. When number one usually is Sumatra, then I will talk about Sumatra. What what do we have in Sumatra? You know there are Starbucks everywhere there. They have Sumatra and coffee, but not Indonesia. By playing number one, then I can remind them, so now you know at least Sumatra is in, in Indonesia. They didn't know Sumatra is in Indonesia, or even now they have Sulawesi coffee. Even a week when we went to Starbucks and asked them, do you know where Sulawesi is? No, they don't know. They, they think it's in Africa or something. So, you know, we're doing a little bit of uh, uh, promoting Indonesia a little bit here and there. And with the same method, we teach uh, different communities and, and schools. So that's how I started... Uh, Focusing my work in Anklung with a lot of, with that potential of the instruments. A little bit about the House of Anklung. The House of Anklung itself is a community based. Uh, we are not incorporated. It's just a bunch of ladies who wants to perform. But I think it's excellent. If everybody wants to lead or if everybody wants to talk, that would be hard, right? So everybody just wants to perform beautifully, wearing uh, costumes uh, on stage, right? And they can smile. And that's some kind, that kind of basic motivation, it really attracts a lot of people. They just want to be there and to have fun. And along the way, I think the process while we're learning, while we're practicing, I think that's more valuable than made them want to stay. Many of them have joined the the group since 2007. I myself joined from 2009. Playing Anklung is it's not, uh, it's not hard, it's easy. All you need to do is shake the instruments. You just watch the uh, conductor, or if you know, you can read the music sheet. But then you have to work with the others. And that's, I think, the, the most important part of playing the Anklung. You will find the beauty of the music by working with the others. Some of them in the beginning, they would say, you know what, I'm good, uh, Tricia, I'm good, I don't have to come to practice. And I said, but what happened to the others? Because the others need you to be there. We have to remind everybody, every time of practice, we need at least, let's say, 10 people to be there and to commit and come. We have to remind them, if you are not able to come, please remind us, please tell us. So, you know, we don't want to waste everybody, anybody uh, else's time, right? So that's kind of commitment that, it, uh, everybody learn through times. In the beginning, before, before they go on stage, they will be um, busy taking pictures. <laughs> no selfie that back then, still taking pictures and talking to each other, having fun, right? When they're on the stage, I can see their faces. In the middle of the song, they get blank. It was like, they don't know where they are. They don't know what they're playing. And there's another part of learning. I will have to remind them, okay, before we go on stage, you need to focus, sit down and focus. And because, you know, the music is just numbers. If, unless you're a musician, if you, get, you won't get lost playing the music. But since you're not musicians, then you have to remember that. After that, I, I think after uh, a performance in Pittsburgh, we went to Pittsburgh for a performance. And, well, everybody was so satisfied. Everybody was so happy. It was... Uh, we think it was excellent. And then they realized, oh, you're right, Trisha. I think we really have to focus and be prepared. 
and to work with the others, work with the other group, with, with the other team. So when, when someone is very good, they, they think, I'm good, they will remind us, you have to be good to the, the, other, the other team. So I'm, I'm so proud of them because of their, their commitment and their dedication. Each one of them are making sure that everybody plays well. So that's, I think that's the main uh, asset of the House of Anklung to play this. Yes, Iwida is our one, our new player, yeah? <laughs> Ibuida is the one sample that she didn't know music, but she can play Anklung with us, Iwida. Yes, okay. And um, we have some member from the Philippines and from uh, United States. Usually they are diplomats who are going to Indonesia. They want to learn the culture and they want to learn Bahasa. So they, they join us, they talk Bahasa bahasa Sahari Hari, Bahasa Gaul. I remember one of them, they can go like, kasihan deh lo, and then emang go pikirin, and then they go to the embassy. I don't know how they do in the embassy though. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have that kind of member who wants to learn the Indonesian culture through Angklung with the other ibu-ibus. Uh, another thing, we practice every Friday night. Uh, and of course, when it's closer to performance, then we have to uh, have more practice. And how do we sustain? I mean, it's, it's uh, from 2007 until now. Uh, I, I remember our first guru was Bapak Sam Ujo from Samung Angklung Ujo. Uh, he's been everywhere. He's been all over the world and then uh, teaching Angklung, making sure there are other groups are, are there in other part of the Indonesia. And he told us that uh, House of Angkung is one of the group that is still there. Uh, usually when he go to a place, he teach for the Independence Day, 17 Agustus. They played for maybe one, two months and a year, and then after that, they're gone. <laughs> so House of Angkung, we are happy that we are still here until now. I think... Thank you. For ibu-ibu, yeah? Ibu-ibu yeah, House ibu of Angkung. Yeah. Not, not anak muda, this is not youth. <laughs> First is our common vision. Well, the basic vision, they all want to perform, they want to have fun, they want to play music. And with that, they, then it comes all the dedication and commitment. And of course, we have a big support from the Indonesian Embassy, being in Washington DC where the Embassy is. First, we have the instruments. That's how we started. The Anklung, where do we get the Anklung? Uh, it happened to be the Embassy has a, a full set of Anklung instruments. And of course, the practice place, because it's, it's hard to practice in someone's house. Uh, at one point, we play uh, practice at my home. We have uh, quite a space there we can practice. And someone from the, my neighbor, neighbor knock on the door. <laughs> you know, this is Friday. Uh, uh, no, that was uh, Wednesday. This is Wednesday night, and you know, we, we go to work tomorrow. You have to keep the sun. The, sound uh, down. Remember that Mr. Pa Erwin, yeah? <laughs> uh, so, so we are very lucky to have the, the embassy who allow us to use the, the part of the basement to practice. And of course, the opportunities. When I mentioned the opportunities, meaning festivals, uh, organizations, big organization who wants to have an event, usually the, the first thing, that, the first part that they contact will be the embassy. They will go to the all the embassies, and then they will ask, is there any groups that you know can perform for their events? And so that's how all the uh, community group in, in DC area get the chance to perform here and there. House of Angklung are very lucky. We, are, we have been performing at different festivals, like the Cherry Blossom Festivals. It's a yearly festival at, in Washington, DC. I see that, hands. <laughs> okay. uh, we've we performed that since 2013. And of course, there's an Asian heritage. In the United States, in every May, it's an Asian heritage month. So that's a busy month for all groups with uh, Asian uh, culture. They'll be performing the full month of uh, May. And funding. Funding is uh, always a problem, a challenge. I, would, I wouldn't say a problem. It would be a challenge for everybody, but we're Embassy has uh, also part of the our big, not big, <laughs> our donors to, to our some of our events. We couldn't do it without the support of the embassy, at least for transportation. If we need to perform it somewhere, 
then we can have the embassy to support us in, in transporting us from the embassy to the places. And sometimes we get some uh, food and beverage, which is, I think is very nice. Because the House of Anglong is very self-sufficient. Uh, we just pay for everything on our own. And uh, networking. This is very important for a group to, to be able to continue their work by having the right organizations, uh, local organization or international organizations to support their work. Meaning first, of course, you get to perform. And then the second is uh, if you find the right uh, institution, they will give you uh, another kind of support like funding as well. When you perform, sometimes it's all volunteer. It's all volunteer, but sometimes they give you different kind of event with, uh, they call it honorarium. Again, because House of Anklung is not incorporated, meaning we cannot receive any money uh, by some big companies. There are only certain amounts that we can receive up to $600 if we are not incorporated. But if it's more, then that's gonna be a, another tax uh, issue. Uh, another thing, establishing a program. House of Anklung, we always, uh, we always have a full year program and targeting different local, different organizations, schools, and events with the right message by finding what is Anklung all about, the philosophy, and then we try to find the right uh, message, the right uh, institution that they want to have that kind of message, then we then we make the program, we tailored the program to meet their needs. And I mentioned about the funding. And uh, another thing, Anklung champion in other states. I cannot do this by myself. DC is so far away. Uh, United States is so wide. So I have some friends from other states who can support me in, in my work. So I have a friend who are very close in Wisconsin. Her, uh, her name is Inda. She doesn't know how to play music. But she loves Anklung. And what she did, uh, she had a group of schools, nine schools, and she invited me to come there and to teach those schools. And then she can continue my work after that. So that's kind of a thing that we can do by working with the others. These are some pictures. Uh, that one on the right left top is, we are in Boston, a New England Indonesian festival. The right one is at the World Bank. I'm with the Dharma Wanita. Left, it's another interactive. This is at the embassy. We have a very beautiful embassy. Uh, every May, there is an open house. We call it Passport DC. We work with the DC government. Uh, the, the embassy is open for public. Usually, we have 3,000 to 5,000 people at that, that day came to the embassy. And the right one is our last big performance at the Kennedy Center. So Kennedy Center is like the opera uh, place for at the Washington DC, yeah, opera house. Um, I would like to touch the, this Anklung Goes to School, the outreach program to reach more uh, American community. The short term target is local schools. We are working with elementary up to high schools, meaning I go to one school, I teach maybe one to three times, and then they will, at least they play few songs, they learn the Indonesian map, they learn all about the, the, uh, the geographic and the people of, of Indonesia. But the long-term target is to have Anglo in the education system as one of music education tool. I just went to Bandung uh, last week and I met one of the Anglo guru, Mr. Handiman. I think he was one of the students from uh, Mr. Dying Sutikna, right? Dying Sutikna. He's the last one, one of the last one. And he, he reminded us, he reminded me that, remember, Anklung is mentioned to be education tool. It's not a performance tool. Anklung is an education tool. There are so many things that you can learn from that simple instrument. So and I think that is the strength of Anklung that we can bring to the American community, not only for the performance, but to bring this very powerful instrument to their education system, to teach the value of the Anklung. Another thing that I would like to remind that the Anklung has three basic philosophies, which is why is it listed in the U U UNESCO. One is teamwork, 
which we all learn while, while we're doing the angklung. Second is mutual respect. Why is mutual respect? Because while you're playing angklung, you have to wait for your turn. You have to give the others to, to play while waiting for your turn. Third is social harmony. With a different kind of background, you might, you might come from different background, but when you work together and respect each other, you can create a harmony. So that's the three basic philosophy of angklung. And that is the strong message that we always uh, mention to the American community. This Anklung AGTS, we call it the AGTS, is already listed as perform in the Performing Arts Catalog in Montgomery County Public School, Maryland, which is one of the best uh, county in the in, uh, United States. And we partner with the Washington Performing Arts in doing embassy adoption programs since 2011. That means we are having uh, uh, Anklung program every year with schools, and we work usually three to six months. Uh, we have reached beyond DC, Maryland, Virginia area, Philadelphia, Wisconsin, Houston, Connecticut. We went to Yale and uh, different universities. So this is some pictures of the Anklung Goes to School. I was teaching some uh, music teachers in Wisconsin, and this is one of the school in Maryland. And now each committed school received three to set of Anklung Sarinande to start with. We're hoping they will use the Anklung in their in schools. Um, this is also Anklung Goes to School. The bottom uh, left is uh, in Pulau. Uh, our first concert 2015 where Hannah played uh, join us. Usually our concert is open by students. Some highlighted, we played at the United Nations. Uh, we already had to own concert, Pulau, and learn from Pring recently. We perform at these this festivals, and we've been to Atlanta, Albany, and everywhere. But I think the highlights of our group is we played at United Nations this year. For the first time, Anklung was heard in United Nations. <laughs> Thank you. And a little bit, these are some group from DC. We have many group from DC. This is Hannah. There you see, Hannah. <laughs> That's Hannah. You're playing Chuck or Chuk? Chuck, okay, Chuck. And the other guy is playing Chuk. So this is the, the three pictures, uh, Talempong from Sumatra. With Anklung, we can collaborate with any kind of music instruments. And I think that's the beauty of Anklung. We had Talempong from West Sumatra. We happened to have Alpha Singer in 2015. They joined us. We played, uh, I think they sang Maskena or something, yeah? And Hana. And the top left is just recently learned from Pring. Pring means bamboo. Our last concert which is inspired by a poem written by Romo Sindunata, learn Ngel Mupring, which means to learn from bamboo. We touch five philosophies of Anklung, of bamboo, and we collaborate. That group, the Jaipongan, is from Bandung, Jugala, Padepokan Jugala, the best Jaipongan dancer. And we had them with rap. So that boy in the middle, he was rapping, and then we had the uh, Anklung. Okay, we'll, we can talk about this later, and this is our last uh, Learn From Pring at the GW, and this is uh, our AGTS student in the top, and at the bottom is a choir from a high school, one of the best high school in DC, Schools Without Walls, they join our concert as well. They use ULOS? Yeah, uh, they, yes. yeah they use ULOS. And this is in United Nations. Uh, I collaborated with uh, Pa Tamujo, okay? Um, I think that's it because I think oh, we have a give a very video. big applause for Ibu Tricia. Thank you. It's been a s s 11 years, yeah, from 2007. Uh, I joined House of Anklung 2009. 2009, okay. Yeah. But the group has been in since 2007. It brings you everywhere in the United States and also to the new um, experience, right? That yeah. you never thought before. Yeah, yeah, something different. Mm -hmm. uh, Tricia, maybe you, you can uh, share with us a little bit about your long-term program. Uh, you told us that uh, you have a, uh, want to have Anklung in education as one of your music education tools in yeah. the United States. So how's the progress? So uh, with the Anklung as education tool, we have to work with uh, superintendents. What, what happened with, the, with Montgomery County, so there is an audition. 
So I have to, there's an open audition. So I'll, first of all, I see what, what are the opportunities. I'm, I, I know the, the DC are very open, the American people, especially in DC, are very open to a different culture. And they want to teach them and bring this different culture into schools. So I look in their in a catalog, their program, they're looking for groups who can bring different cultures to the schools. Any kind, dances, uh, any kind of workshop. So find that kind of a county, and then they will be open for public. You can go for audition, which they are, I think, nine superintendents. You just have to present your instruments and your program. You have to make your, just like s simple curriculum. And then from there, they will decide whether this is applicable or acceptable for to be listed in their catalog. So we already have that in Montgomery County, and now we are working with other schools. Now we are targeting DC public school. The next one. Oh, give a big applause again. It's a <laughs> great progress. <laughs> Thank you. So I have, uh, maybe uh, the audience wants to ask more, but I think we need to hear more story from Hannah. Please, Hannah, it's your time. Thank you. Um, I think we're gonna start, thank you so much. I think we're gonna start with a video. Um, my group played here the first night of our tour. We took a, a tour across Java, starting in Jakarta, and our first show was on July 6th, and it was here at, at America. But they've all gone home. Uh, so we have a video of Jolly Jolly uh, with Rumput playing, I think.
Oh, give a standing applause. I give a standing applause for you, Hannah. Terima kasih. Please give the video for a second. Tolong kasih video yang sedikit. Saya mau kasih tebak-tebakan. I would like give you a little bit. Uh, the white one, the white, white version. Yes. Can you guess what is it? <laughs> Ayo, apa? <laughs> Who's gonna answer it? Ma'am, do you, do, you, do you recognize it? Papan kecapi. Is that right, Hannah? Board of kecapi, no? A kecapi? No. Belum. No. Belum. Bukan. Papan penggilasan untuk uh, nyuci. Is that correct? Apa ya? Mesin cuci? Ya, benar. Wow, very creative, right? You get a prize. <laughs> Ada seperti itu di Indonesia? Ada, oke, okay, oke. Okay. But it's, uh, it's already a rare thing, you know? <laughs> right, 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 right. And now we're using it. Yeah, yeah. How, anyway. how did you find it? I don't know, it was his idea. Uh, you can get them in like flea markets and like, yeah, they're like vintage, yeah, yeah. yeah. Flea market in the US or yeah. here? In the US. US. In the US. And yeah. how, how did you come with the idea, uh, okay, it can um, produce the sound that <laughs> can uh, contribute to your karanchong? Um, so, a lot of what we do, not for this piece that you saw, but a lot of what we do is mix uh, old-time American folk music or uh, Appalachian music from the eastern part of the United States with crunchong. Uh -huh. And so that instrument is really common in American folk music, in uh. like older American folk music. So, that's where the inspiration came from. Okay, I believe we have more interesting story from Hannah. So, please, sure. Hannah, it's your time. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, everyone, for having me today. Uh, my name is Hannah Sandford. Uh, I'm here this year in Indonesia on a Fulbright uh, research grant, uh, and I'm studying Kronchung, and my center is in Solo, of course. Um, and I also spent a little bit of time on the island of Mindanao, which is off the coast of Belitung, studying a style of music called Stambul Fajar, and I spent about a month there. Um, so I first encountered Indonesian music through a community gamelan uh, in the city where I was living for the past 10 years, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, so it's a Balinese gamelan, uh, open to anyone. Uh, Andy just says, as long as you can count to eight. If you can count to eight and you can hit the gong, you can join the ensemble. Um, and so, you know, there's there's all sorts of folks. Uh, Pat Wayang, who's playing the ugal in the front, he's from Bali and he works at uh, Virginia Commonwealth University. And this, we rehearsed at the University of Richmond. Um, and so the guy playing kendang is Dr. Andy McGraw and he's a professor of ethnomusicology at the University of Richmond. Um, so through this, um, I probably joined that gamelan about eight years ago. Um, and through this, I had all these opportunities to work with guest artists. Um, so the man playing uh, the gambang is Pat Dani Sugianto, and he's a docent at Institute Seni Indonesia Solo. Um, and he's a master gamelan player and crunchung player. Uh, he says perhaps the only one in the, in the world, and I think he might be right. Um, and then the man playing Gender. Oh, I have a laser, don't I? Yes, this guy. This is Pat Gusti Sudarta. Um, he is a master Balinese Dalang, and he also is Dosen at EC Dempasar. Um, so I've worked with them many, many times over the past, uh, past eight years. Um, so this, you know, for this performance, we were doing we were doing Balinese and Javanese, um, and uh, here's Andy. Oops, sorry, little preview there. <laughs> um, so to work with these guest artists, I think is mutually beneficial. Um, you know, for me, that was my first time. You know, getting to practice Bahasa Indonesia a little bit, um, learning this music, and not just learning it from Andy, who's also an expert, but learning it directly from somebody who's from Indonesia. I think is really special. And it wasn't just that, like, there were also opportunities to socialize, to cook together, to experience Indonesian food for the first time. Um, so I think it went a lot deeper than that. And I also think that for these guest artists, this is a big opportunity for them as well, um, that if there wasn't this interest in Indonesian music at the university level, that they might not have the chance to come to America and, and see what that's like and try American food and search for rice all the time. Um, so through Gamelan Raga Kusuma, the community Balinese ensemble, I found out about the Dharma Siswa Scholarship, which is from the Ministry of Education and Culture in Indonesia. Uh, and it's open to any country, uh, it's open to students from any country that has good diplomatic ties with Indonesia. 
and they can come to study Bahasa or Tari, uh, uh, Seni Rupa. Uh, and for me, I chose Karwitan at EC Solo. Uh, and part of the appeal was they have a Balinese Gamelan class, and I've heard good things about the quality of that university. And also, like I was saying earlier, before I left, I had seen a video of Kronchong. I'd seen a couple of videos at that point. And I just was a little bit curious about it. And I understood solo to be the center of Kronchong music. So uh, after my year, uh, and actually kind of during my year uh, on Dharma Siswa, this was 2014 to 15. Um, during that year, I started sending videos of Kronchong groups that I found in solo back to Andy who you can now see playing the cello. Um, there's a lot of people that say the, the cello in Kronchong acts as the kendang. Um, so for him, he could already play kendang, so that was kind of like an easy transition, I think. Um, and so I started sending him videos of individual players just playing chuk, one of the ukuleles, just playing chak, just playing cello. And I sent that back to him, and he showed a couple of people that were already in the gamelan, already had an interest in Indonesian music, and they would painstakingly learn these parts just by playing one second of the video at a time, trying it, one second of the video, trying it. So there was a good amount of time where they had started to play this music and they had never worked with a crunch musician directly. Um, and so the, the background of the, of the players is all, all over the place. Uh, John, who's over here playing the guitar, he's a software developer. Uh, the guy earlier that we saw playing the Messine, uh, Messine Chuchi Pakayan. Uh, <laughs> he's a lawyer. Um, I teach guitar lessons. The girl that was playing bass teaches guitar lessons. So we come from all these different backgrounds. Um, but yeah, so started to get into it that way. Um, and so then after, after about a year, I got back in May of 2015. Um, and we kind of just started slowly. Um, and we, we had a couple shows at the Kaduta Anbasar. Uh, in DC, um, some little shows around town. Um, and then in the spring of 2016, we made a small tour on the East Coast. Uh, it was called Shadow Ballads. Uh, and Gusi Sudarta, the darling that I mentioned earlier, and Dani Sugianto, uh, the docent from EC Solo, came with us, along with Penny Chandrarini, who I'll mention again later. Um, so we did this cross collaborative tour, and that's when we started mixing in this style of music. It's called Old Time. There's a mountain range on the east coast of America called Appalachia, and old time is a kind of Appalachian music, so it's this kind of folk music. So we started mixing these two things together, and we made this whole story for the Shadow Ballads tour. And so here we went to Bucknell, Cornell, uh, Wake Forest, and North Carolina. And the whole show uh, was a mix of cruncher music and old time Appalachian music, um, because we wanted to bring something new to the table. Uh, so at this point, we've been doing Kronchong for about three years now, but there will always be people in Java that are better at us than Kronchong. So we want to have something new that we can share, something, a fresh perspective on it. Um, so yeah, I want to talk a little bit about Kronchong in American spaces. A lot of people here will ask me, you know, what's it, what's it like? Where do you play? What, is the, what do American audiences think of it? Um, so here, this is a little bit dark, um, but we're in a puppet theater. It's called Black Cherry Puppet Theater, and it's in Baltimore. And this is the first time you can see this. Um, I had to pick a video. Um, but So this is actually a giant kind of, ah, thank you. Ah, nice, thank you. Um, so this is a giant kind of scrolling artwork called that we call Cranky. Uh, it actually has its roots in old time Appalachia. Uh, they've been around, it's kind of a scrolling panorama artwork, or like a bioscope llama so you can see the frame going by you. Um, so we call it cranky, it's very similar to Wang Beber in Java. Um, and sometimes we mix in shadow puppetry, similar to Wang Kulit with this. Um, so, and this is often part of our show, so there's a theatrical element. So we're doing Kronchong, we're doing tunes like Jali Jali or Yening Tawang, and then sometimes we'll do these Indo-Appalachian mixtures, so the Appalachian music mixed with Kronchong, and then we'll have crankies with it. Um, so this might be kind of an unusual space for Kronchong in the context of Indonesia, but it works at home. Um, and you'll also see, this is, uh, this is early this spring, this is in February, and this is Dani Sugianto again. Um, while I was here this year in solo on Fulbright, Dani's got a Fulbright to collaborate with Rumput back at home, back in America. And you might say, well, then what am I doing there? But I went home for two weeks in February and we got to do this collaboration. 
Um, so then uh, while he was there and while I was here, um, we made another cross-cultural performance, another cross-cultural tour called Akar. Um, and for this, we were using the crankies that I mentioned earlier, the puppetry, and we told the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, Mas Joko dan Pohon Kacang. And the first night was here at Ad America. Uh, so we, yeah, we did Jakarta, and then Semarang, Surabaya, Bandung, uh, Jogja, and Solo. So it was about three weeks. Uh, we took the train because that cranky is really big, and you can't take it on a plane. You can collapse it, Bisa dilipat, but so had to ride the train. Um, and so yeah, like I said, um, I think that you know, as we did this tour, a lot of the feedback that I got was like, "Wow, this is something new." Like, you know, we like seeing the way that you're mixing that you're mixing American music with Indonesia. It's something new to the table. So, so. Also in terms of spaces, so like I said, that was an, a, one example of places that we perform. We perform at universities, uh, at the embassy, like I said, um, but we really love playing in intimate spaces. Um, so here we're at a house show. It's just in someone's basement. Uh, you can't see the audience, but they're all also sitting on the floor. So everyone's dudot lesehan, and it's just really intimate and quiet. Um, and that's kind of the spaces that we like playing the most. Um, Sometimes we have a hard time in the States finding other groups to collaborate with um, in terms of this kind of show culture, um, just because what we're doing is, is kind of fringe and has this theatrical element. So we'll often split shows with the gamelan um, or sometimes uh, with indie rock bands or kind of like funky acoustic acts, kind of quirky acoustic acts works too. We also play a lot of festivals. This is some of the members at um, In Light, a festival in Richmond, uh, and it features works of art that involve light. So we got in because we use the cranky and it's backlit, so it's kind of a shadow performance. Um, we also participated in Clifftop, which is an old time Appalachian uh, string band festival every year in West Virginia. Um, so because what we're doing is mixing, uh, we entered the neo-traditional contest. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing that. Everybody camps out. Um, yeah, and I wanted to go back to, you know, people always ask me, what's the reaction of American audiences? What do they think of Hranchong? And I think that the reaction is good and that they like it. Or they tell me they do, <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> um, oh, thanks. <laughs> um, and especially Langkam Jawa Hranchong. Uh, and that's kind of what, what the members of Rumput I think like playing the most is Langam Jawa Karanchong. And I think that's because the scale that's used uh, approximates Slendro and Pelog from the Gamelan. Um, so it's a little bit, it's just a five note scale instead of the typical seven note diatonic scale in a lot of Western music. And it gives a different feeling. I think maybe especially for us because we haven't grown up with this scale. So it sounds, it gives us a, a different feeling that we just can't really get from Western music. Um, and other people, you know, when we do Asli or Langam, people will say it's really relaxing, it's soothing. Um, so yeah, I think overall it's perceived really well. It's, it's received really well. So I wanna talk a little bit about the groups that promote Indonesian arts uh, in America. You know, I'll talk mainly from the perspective who I've gotten to work with. Um, I think actually in a general way, universities are, um, big stakeholders in promoting Indonesian arts in America. So usually when there's, you know, there's several hundred gamelan across the US and they're usually housed in universities. So Cornell, Wake Forest, Bucknell, University of California, Davis, et cetera, et cetera, there's so many. And every time there's a gamelan in a university, there's usually a class that's offered for credit. So students can come through and just for a semester try out the gamelan. And then there's often a community group. So anybody in the community can join in, try out the gamelan. And then the community hears the gamelan because they're having these performances, they're playing out. So all of a sudden you have a thousand people who have experienced gamelan and they know, they know what that is. They know a little something more about Indonesia. So I think that's a big, big impact. Um, it's also been, uh, we've had the honor to work with the Indonesian embassy in DC so much. Um, but we're also really grateful because it keeps us plugged into the greater Indonesian network, even while we're all stateside. Um, I think that's really important, especially because uh, for Roomput, all of our, all of our you know, uh, continuous membership, Donis being a, you know, a guest artist here and there, and Penny as well, 
all of our continuous membership were all Americans. So I think it's really important for us to stay plugged into this greater Indonesian community. Uh, and also Fulbright. Um, I, I would not be able to count how many students and scholars Fulbright has funded who go back to these universities and start a gamelan or start another kind of ensemble uh, and end up bringing Indonesian music and Indonesian culture to so many people. Uh, and Fulbright goes both ways, right? You know, it gave, it gave Johnny Sugianto the opportunity to come to America this year. Uh, so, talk a little bit about the impact of culture exchange. Um, in the front, this is Penny, Penny Tandarini, who I met my first year at Dharma Siswa. She was my Sindanan teacher at EC Solo. Um, and she's so fun and so talented. Um, and she's become my sponsor this year for Fulbright. And I think that for a lot of people who apply for Fulbright, that's one of their difficulties, is finding, finding an affiliate. Um, but I was really lucky that I already had this relationship. Um, so, you know, and the first time I went to Indonesia was four years ago. So this has been this developing relationship over time. Um, I bought my first set of crunching instruments, my chuk and my chat, from her husband, who's a master instrument maker. Um, so I think that, at least from my perspective, I think music is this kind of soft power, that it's not going to directly affect policy, but that on a grassroots level, it creates an environment where these kind of changes can happen. And I don't think I can really speak to the Indonesian perspective about these cultural exchanges, but I do know that a lot of people have come up to me after, you know, after our tour when Rumput was playing and just told us how much they appreciated that we'd taken the time to learn this music and, and take time and, and really dig in deep with it. Um, so this is one, this is a photo from the last night of our tour. Um, so we have Danis all the way over to the side, his wife, and then their daughter, uh, Gusi Sudarta's wife, and then Penny again in the front, some of the members of Romput. Um, so this is all, everyone's become a family for me that, you know, that I've only been, you know, working on the ground here you know, back and forth for four years, um, and really just two years here continuously, but this has become kind of my new family, so I can say personally, like, it's made a big impact on me. I wanna say thank you to Amanef and Fulbright for having me here. Um, also, uh, <laughs> um, and also uh, University of Pittsburgh, I'll be entering a master's into PhD program in the fall uh, for ethnomusicology, and my focus will be Kranchong. And thank you for uh, EC Solo for having me today. Thank you. Wow, interesting explanation from <coughs> Hannah. So, how many kebaya do you have? <laughs> yeah, because... Hanya empat. Hanya empat. <laughs> so, you can give more <laughs> to her. <laughs> Only four for right now. And you make your own hairdo for the traditional way? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can learn how to use... I should, yeah, sanggul. Sanggul? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not yet pintar. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's a, maybe a different, unique experience when we as an Indonesian people to see uh, very people like you uh, promoting our culture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Give a big applause again for Hannah. So we have a still a plenty of time to ask more directly from the audience to the speakers. But um, before that, I think I would like to play one video from Tricia, right? Uh, this is a short video from our uh, journey in United Nations uh, last April. So please play the video from uh, Trisha performance, yeah? Highlight, not a performance. It's not a performance, but it's a it's highlight, a, yeah? like the uh, highlight. Do we have the video? Thank you.
It's a goosebump moment. Super proud moment. Big applause again for Trish and the team. Wow. So how's the response from the, the diplomat from each country that they, when they try to play uncle? It's, it's always been amazing. Every time we have that um, interactive, when everybody get to touch and play the instrument after they hear the unique sound, it's just amazing. For them, it's, it's just ma magic. First of all, they get to play the instrument. They get to play music, even though many maybe of them are not musicians. And it's the joy, I think, the feeling of coming from different background. And they learn how each of them sounds different. And by playing together and by working with the others, and it can create harmony. And I think that is, I think, one of the strengths of Anglung has. And I think all the, I think we should be proud. Indonesian, we should be proud with these instruments. We can go out and share the beauty of Indonesia, but we can also share the beauty of uh, togetherness, of that sound of peace of the bamboo. So it is very, very powerful, I think. I'm, I'm very humbled to be able to promote Indonesia through these Anklung instruments. I didn't expect it, it would be this far. But I mean, every time I teach, <laughs> thank you. Every time I teach uh, a group of audience, or even at schools with the kids, it's been an amazing journey, and I'm still learning. I'm, I'm, I'm still learning until now uh, with this, uh, the history of Anklung. Even the story of Anklung itself, it, it tells a lot of uh, philosophy. One of the things that I, I, I read, even the size of the bamboo, you see there is the, the Anklung has two different tubes. One is higher and the others are smaller. They, that said, one of the philosophy is, it shows us as, as human, the larger, the stronger, we protect the weaker. So you know, there are a lot of stories that you can tell while, while doing the Anklung Interactive. And that's how, I think that's what is so different uh, being, having Anklung. After we perform, and then we, if we get the chance to have an interactive, and we get to tell the story of the instruments, of the Indonesians, people of our culture, and uh, of our spirit. So I think that's, that's about Anklung. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. So it's time, it's your time to ask some question more to our fellow speaker here. Who's going first? Okay. Um, good evening. My question is for Hannah. Can you mention your name, please? Oh, my name is Meli. I'm flo from Whole Dream Center in Mongolia. Um, actually, my question is, how do you comprehend the meaning of every lyric? in that song, since every song is Indonesian language and has different dialects. And, and then how many days or, yeah, to memorize those lyrics. Thank you. Thank oh, you. I want more for uh, Mrs. Tricia. Tricia. Yeah. Uh, is that Anklun community just in Washington, D.C., or you have um, plan to spread it, um, to make it more or s uh, spread it out in some counties in U.S. or in Atlanta or something. Since next year I'm going to Atlanta, so <laughs> <laughs> if you have... She wants to join your team. <laughs> I think we have an Anklung champion already. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You go, you go first, Anna. Sure. Thank you for your question. Um, so uh, for Indonesian, I feel pretty comfortable. The lyrics in Indonesian, I feel like I, for the most part, understand them, unless there are double entendre or the pantun has, has pantun. deeper meaning. Um, uh, but for Javanese, I'm still really, really learning. Um, so for songs like Yaning Tawang or Jinangkulo, which I learned to collaborate with Patricia, uh, I'm still really, really learning. So what I usually do is sit down with somebody and have them explain word for word. So then I'll, I will memorize the meaning and I will memorize the words for that song, uh, but I still can't speak Sahari Harian. <laughs> uh, but, um, but yeah, and I, and I think uh, that's been really rich for me as well. So for Yenning Tawang, I always thought that that song was about love between you know, man and woman, romantic love. Um, but someone told me this year, uh, so it was written by Anjar Ani, 
and he wrote it. He was actually waiting for the birth of his baby girl, and that just gave me that gave me merinding. That gave me chills. I just it made it so much more special to me. Um, how long does it take me? If it's in Indonesian, not that long. If it's in Javanese, I feel like I'm still working at it because I'll keep. I'll think I have it memorized, and someone will be like, "Actually, that's not pronounced that way." So it's like <laughs> it's kind of a it's kind of a process still. I'm still learning. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, well, actually, there are different communities uh, of Angklung in the United States right now. Uh, they said they were inspired by House of Angklung. So I know there is one in Florida. And uh, I just came recently from Houston. Do I have some? Yeah, you're from Houston. Uh, now they're Houston in, uh, because they have, uh, I think, more than five sets of Angklung, amazing Angklung. So Mr. Sam Ujo was uh, in, in, uh, in D.C. last April and May. So uh, I told the, the consulate in Houston, I think you should ask Mr. Sam Ujo to go there and uh, have the community uh, Anklung uh, built there. So now we are hoping Houston. And I know there's one in San Francisco, some uh, women's associations. I don't know whether they're active or not, but sometimes they play for the Independence Day. So usually these groups, you will see them on Independence Day. To you bless Agustus, it's the time for everyone to perform. Go out and perform. And after that, they're gone. So, <laughs> and then wait for another, another time to perform. So we'll see. If you go to happen to go to Atlanta, there are a big community of uh, Indonesian community over there. So maybe you can start over there. Yes, thank you. And a good Indonesian restaurant in Atlanta. Oh. <laughs> okay, another question? Who's going to ask? Over there, okay. Uh, good evening, I'm Nazla. I'm, I just arrived from Washington DC two days ago uh, after one year studying there and I witnessed, I was lucky that I witnessed the performance of Ibu Tricia on May 5th in George Washington University with Song Ujo. And I highly appreciate your performance and your team at that time. It was very amazing. And I got that small anklung and played together with other audience. Thank you. And uh, I think it was really great. And when I was in Syracuse in New York, I didn't really hear about Indonesian uh, activities or outreach activities until I moved to Washington, D.C. And this is the place that, of course, the embassy is located. And then we can... Uh, uh, find more Indonesian community there. And my question actually, how uh, maybe it's related with the previous question about how to outreach more to US audience, especially how to sustain this amazing group because I think this Anklung group is very amazing. And if I didn't know people from embassy, maybe I didn't know about this event and maybe I didn't know about the Anklung activity that we can join. So how to, how to, uh, and especially I know um, it's very uh, challenging competition uh, with U.S. Um, like a commercial music or jazz. So how to sustain in the midst of this uh, music commercial industry? And also for Hannah, when you go back to the U.S., and how do you think this Kroncong can survive or sustain in the midst of um, not just U.S. commercial uh, American song uh, uh, music, but also from other countries, because I saw from Latin America, from, from other Asia, they also perform their own uh, music, tr uh, traditional music. So how do you see this Kroncong can survive and sustain for long term in the US? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming to our concert. Uh, that was our second concert, and uh, we are very happy to have that concert. Uh, the first concert, we only had a the building was the capacity for 500, and we had it full house. Uh, mostly still Indonesian. We were not confident that we could reach uh, more Americans. But uh, our second concert, uh, we, the building actually is on May 12, and we had at the at the George Washington University Auditorium, and uh, we had more than 900 audience. Mostly are Americans, and this will relate to uh, your question: How do we get this? Uh, kind of music or instruments to, to spread out in the United States. It is a challenge because there are not many news about Indonesia. Not everybody knows Indonesia. They know Bali, of course. That, that's our 
that's the biggest problem. But then we have to work the with the community. Right now, what we're doing, what, I, what we can do as a community group, we have Indonesian uh, parents who have kids. They have their kids at school. So we encourage them to, to introduce Angklung, at least in their, in their community. They have international day. These schools have international days uh, once a year, or maybe sometimes twice a year. So we encourage them to bring Indonesian to the schools. And they can work first with the embassy or with their, with their own. They can bring, usually they have their own batik or angklung, and they can showcase them. That's one. I think that's the least thing that we, we could do as, as a community. And then the second, I think we cannot uh, uh, forget that the social media is big. Uh, with our last concert, we were planning to sell the tickets. In the beginning, we were so, uh, the first concert was $15. Of course, the Indonesian, they would buy it. The second concert, we were trying to sell it for $20, $25. It was so hard to sell these tickets because they, they didn't know, know anything about these instruments. And it's in May, which is the Asian Heritage Month. So there is a lot of uh, different uh, events, and some of them are free. So what we did was, we, we have to put in the advertising, in the advertisement in the radio. Uh, we didn't get much from the radio. And last, we have to give out the tickets. So we encourage our Indonesian friends, our Indonesian uh, diplomats, and uh, anybody who knows uh, the Angklung to go to their community and just give out the tickets. And I think that's many of them, the result was many of them have never heard the Angklung before. And I think that's one of our uh, main idea to have that Angklung, our second concert, to get more Americans to see these beautiful instruments. So when they came, they were so surprised. First, we didn't have um, a conventional uh, Angklung arrangement. We were lucky there is one uh, music arranger in, uh, in DC, he's, in, he's Indonesian, and his arrangement is very progressive. So we use his instruments. So we can play from Ave Maria to uh, the Beatles. We can play Zach. We can play Moana song. And that really opened their eyes. Oh, this Anklung is amazing. You don't only play your traditional. So I think we take this instrument to the next level, not only traditional, but we can go international, meaning international and to get more audience. Some people, some Americans were, were questioning, what about the traditional Anklung? There will be some other events, smaller events, maybe at the museum, at an institution, where that is where the place is. But if you want to reach more American, that's what we do. And then, of course, we work closely with the embassy to, to, go, to, uh, to go out to more different states. And again, social media. So it's, it's, a, it's a big work for everyone to have the Anklung to to be spread out in the United States. Again, we work with, with different communities. There is Permias. We can work closely with the Permias. I went to Michigan, and I went uh, to, not to Atlanta, there's another state that I went to, and I work with the Permias, and they have the international night. So, you know, we have these uh, hubs everywhere, and they work hard to promote Indonesia. Again, the, we have as the, the community has to work together with the government, the U.S. Embassy, and of course, the local organization, the American organization. So that is my answer. Thank you, Hannah. Anna, it's your turn. Yeah. Sure, um, how to sustain Krantong. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, this is, you know, since we just wrapped up this tour in July, everybody just went home, um, and I'll be back, I'll be back, we're gonna meet the next time around Labor Day. And that's gonna be kind of like the next thing on the table. So what do we wanna do next? Uh, and I was talking to Mas Ahir earlier because they just did this European tour, and that's kind of what we want to do next. Um, but that's in Europe. Um, in America, um, so like I mentioned, I'll be entering this graduate program, and that's in Pittsburgh, which is six hours away from Richmond. Uh, I aim and hope to still be involved in Rumput, but that's a, that's a six-hour drive, so I might be out of my mind, but I'm going to try. Um, and then a kind of further goal, maybe not my first year in Pittsburgh, but who knows, um, is to start another ensemble there that will hopefully just run parallel. Um, so kind of spread the crunch on collective a little bit. The only other thing I want to add is, um, so for Gamelan, like I said, we have all these visiting scholars all the time. Crunchong 
by and large, is not taught in the university. You go and learn with groups, like you learn from the community. Um, it's changing, but there really aren't fixtures of Kronchong scholars. Um, and so that's kind of a challenge when we talk about bringing guest artists to Americas, because usually when we had these visiting scholars there in Gamelan, but Kronchong, Kronchong doesn't really operate on that level. So um, I'd like to see uh, visiting guest artists who specialize in Kronchong, so see if there's new ways to collaborate with that. Okay, even though it's a challenge, uh, why not to try uh, the new way to promote um, Kronchong in the United States, right? Yes. Okay, uh, related to our theme today in this evening, traditional music in new spaces promoting Indonesian music in the United States as also a closing statement from both of you. So you see it's a new space or a new challenge also. Please, yeah. And also a message for us. Okay. Um, so there, there are, I think we have to find, uh, again, as, a, as I mentioned before, the, the main theme of this Anklung, and we use this Anklung as a, as a tool. If we talk about the, the world right now, which is everybody is busy with, their, uh, with the gadgets, with all these disruptive uh, things, I think Anklung can remind us that we are as, as human, if we work with each other and create harmony, we can have a we can have a better world, and uh, keep us reminding us keep reminding us with the philosophy, the three big philosophies of the Anklung, and then this strong message can be spread out to the spaces in to different spaces in the United States, which I think uh, is very related f uh, with what happened in the United States. So. I would strongly suggest uh, all the musicians everywhere and uh, our dear friends who work uh, tired, uh, very hard to promote Anklung here and there, please keep doing what we're doing because the message is, is very strong and uh, we, just keep, we just need to work with other group and collaborate. I think also very important to collaborate because we cannot work this uh, by ourselves. Anklung can work with other groups Anklung can work with other instruments, and let's use that strength to share uh, Indonesia to the United States and the other world. Yes. Hannah, what is your opinion about uh, related to our, our team today? Uh, yeah, to related to our theme today. Um, yeah, I think, I think the big takeaway from all of this is community, once again, like we were talking about earlier. Um, that, that I think the takeaway is to find creative creative ways to work together. Um, and that, that's that been my big takeaway from Indonesian music, whether it's gamelan, whether it's angklung, whether it's kronchong. It doesn't, it doesn't work to play it alone. We have to, we have to build a community together. Okay, we have uh, one key message, uh, collaborate, collaboration from Tricia and community from Johanna. Yeah? Okay, uh, actually we need to talk more, but the time's up. I really would like to hear actually the question from this side, yeah, because we haven't hear a voice, but we run out of the time, Bapak. So, <laughs> mungkin nanti bisa bertanya langsung setelah diskusi, termasuk, um, maybe you said that just ibu-ibu, but when it performed at the United UN headquarters, they are super mom, you know. So, give big applause again <laughs> from two speakers. <laughs> Thank you very much for... Uh, sharing the experience for us today and it's end up our discussion today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I hope all of you had a great discussion, but don't go uh, just yet because we have another session coming up. But before that, I would like to have uh, the moderator and also the speakers. And also I would invite Bapak Jed and also Ibu Hazelia Margareta from Yusindo to come on stage to take picture with Ad America logo and also with Yusindo logo. So can I have all of the speakers and moderator? Jangan kemana-mana dulu ya Bapak dan Ibu sekalian karena setelah ini kita masih ada sesi yang seru nih. Jadi stay tune.
Ya, sudah siap? Foto sekali lagi. Satu, dua, tiga. One, two, three. Oke, terima kasih. Thank you so much. Boleh minta tepuk tangan ya dong untuk para pembicara kita pada hari ini. Thank you so much. Ya, seperti yang tadi sudah kita janjikan. Mau ada performance ya? Ada performance yang... Ya, seperti tadi yang sudah saya dan kita semua janjikan di sini, kita ada satu sesi lagi yang seru banget. Nah kebetulan banget mereka udah siap-siap nih dari tadi ya di luar udah pada nggak sabar mau perform. So mungkin kita langsung siap-siap aja. So minta tepuk tangan yang paling meriah untuk Sanggarku, Sanggar Kreativitas dan Rumah Belajar. Terima kasih El, thank you. So we are very lucky to have this wonderful kids from Sanggarku. Maju lagi ya, oke. Okay. Ini yang depan ya. Oke. Okay. Ya. Semua siap-siap ya. Saya nanti permisi berdiri di sini. Bisa lihat, bisa lihat. A little, a little background about this uh, kids. So what are, we are trying to show you is uh, what we are doing in in United States. The Anklung goes to school when we teach kids by having a short workshop. I work with this wonderful 20. How many do we have? 23, 24, 25 kids. Just one time. Just yesterday, two hours. So we really, we really need your support. Uh, and sing along. There will be a song that I think you can sing along. Okay. How about senyum, senyum, senyum? And, uh, okay, okay. Bisa lihat, kalau di sini bisa lihat tangannya? <laughs> Semua bisa lihat tangan tante? Coba. Yang nggak bisa lihat, geser. Tantenya berdiri di sini nih. Yang nggak kelihatan, geser dikit. Yang nggak kelihatan, nah, geser ke sini dikit biar bisa kelihatan. Oke, okay. ada yang besar angklungnya, ada yang kecil, ada yang dua, ya. Semua nomornya ingat, ingat. Kita boleh coba dulu ya, coba. Sekarang angklungnya di, ya. Lagu yang mana? I like that when they ask that. Lagu yang mana? Kasih. Coba kita cek dulu ya. Coba yang kita mulai. Kita minta izin dulu. So I will ask your permission just for them to sound check because we didn't get the chance to sound check today. So oke. Okay. Lihat tangannya. Bisa lihat semua tangannya ke depan. Yo, kelihatan? Saya mundur dikit lagi. Bisa mundur dikit. Ya, bisa lihat ya. Oke. Okay. Yuk kita mulai dulu ya. Siapa yang bunyi nih? Yang ini siapa yang ini? Ya, yang ini? Ya oke, okay. good. Kita lagu pertama ya. Silakan. Kita ada Om Aldi yang main keyboard. Om Aldi ini. Music arranger loh, so I'm very lucky to have Om Maldi today. Oke, okay. yuk Om Maldi. Semua lihat depan. Siap, angkat angklungnya, senyum. Thank you. 
Bagus kan? Twinkle twinkle lah sama latihannya cuma kemarin loh. Only practice yesterday. Second song, remember we're gonna play this song three times. We're gonna sing first. So angklungnya dipeluk. Ya, angklungnya peluk dulu ya. Ingat lagunya apa? Nanti Bapak Ibu, please join us and sing. We're gonna sing together and we play angklung and after that we're gonna play and sing. Remember that short short short. Okay. I told them yesterday that we're going to play 30 songs. 30 lagunya. Terus dia mereka bilang, impossible kata dia. Ya? Bisa kalau mainnya 10 kali tiap lagu, if you play each song 10 times, then 30 songs. Okay, so our last song, it's called America the Beautiful. And it's about, it's about how big America is, how beautiful America is. And it's, this is the song that we usually play every at the end of an interactive with the audience. Masih ingat lagunya? Nah, they've never heard the song before, so it's a bit challenging, but because it's slow, so I think we're good, yeah? Okay, angkat tanggungnya. Thank you. 
Big applause one more time for Sanggarku. Terima kasih. Bapak gurunya mana Mas Arifnya nggak ada? Is Mas Arif here? Oh, Mas Arif. Oke, okay, so Mas Arif is the leader of the Sanggarku and Mas Aldi, thank you so much. And terima kasih anak-anak. Bagus sekali. Senang main angklung? Senang? Senang nggak main angklung? Senang. Mau main lagi nggak? Oh, mau. Gampang nggak? Is it easy? Is it easy? Oke. Okay. It's easy. Oke. Okay. Thank you uh, and thank you for, uh, so much for having me and having the kids to join us today. I hope you enjoy and learn something from what we share. And good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What a wonderful performance. Can I have um, all of the kids on stage? Okay, they're on stage. Can I have you on stage? And also, uh, para pelatihnya mungkin? Mau naik ke atas panggung untuk foto bareng dengan anak-anak uh, sanggarku berserta dengan logo Atamerika. Ada pelatihnya? Agak macet di atas ya. <laughs> oh siap, oke. Okay. Mau fotonya mungkin agak merapat lagi aja, adek-adek. Um, ya, agak munduran sedikit aja, dikit. Nah udah stop di situ. Yang di depan sini. Bisa agak rapetan ke belakang. Oke, okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for participating at this event. Hopefully we can see each other again at Adam America's next event. Have a great evening everyone, thank you so much. Um, siapa yang mau pegang, kamu bisa pegang mungkin. Berat, berat deh, berat deh, berat. Ibu, 